Hello and welcome to Computer Applications and Architectural Design. My name is Austin and I teach Digital Representation. Uh, so this video is going to teach you how to navigate Rhino and Grasshopper, how to find functions, and how to interface with the programs. So by the end of this you should be able to open and fluidly navigate uh, each the platform Rhino and the plugin Grasshopper uh, and learn a bit of introductory step of how they relate to each other. Uh, so first things first is um, understanding what our modeling environment is. Uh, so firstly, it's related to us through a series of camera views. And these cameras can represent the world in a few ways. Uh, if you right click down on each of these views, a drop down menu appears. Uh, and you can change or alter how the world is represented, either as a series of curves and lines, which is a wireframe, uh, or it could be shaded or textured uh, or rendered transparent or having very stylistic filters. You can also change or set your view under here. Uh, and you have a few that are preloaded in here, which uh, a few orthographic orientations, uh, a perspective, a two points, is isometrics, and you can create your own under name views as well. You can change your camera, and under here you can give more uh, articulation on uh, your camera length, uh, where it is, uh, what it looks at, uh, its various elevations, um, and so forth. Um, now, the other thing you're gonna, in, you see in front of you is uh, these different views. Uh, you can sort of adjust the views, you can split the quadrant, uh, and you can also expand uh, these views and in the bottom here you can cycle through different tabs which relate uh, some cameras you have set up and you can bring it back uh, with these uh, four views so um, I can type in top and here in the command line I can type in four view uh, to bring it back. Uh, the, the next thing you're going to notice is that you have this big grid in front of you and this grid has some colored lines. Uh, these relate information about where the world origin is. At the moment, everything is 0, 0, 0. So if I were to put a point in the world uh, and give it a coordinate 0, 0, 0, it would put it right in the middle. And you'll notice that that point coincides with those axes, axes in each of the views. Uh, so this is called a construction plane. Uh, red is the x-axis, green is the y-axis. Now, it's always a plane, uh, so in the top view, that's x and y. In a, uh, in a front view, uh, in fact, this is relating uh, z and x, and then y and z. Um, this will become more useful as we get more complicated geometry and just get launched into setting it up. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is um, the size of this grid is. Uh, so you can control whether this is 3 inches or 3 miles. Uh, one of the pervasive things with digital platforms and digital technology is its inability to relate scale. It's just as easy for me to draw two points three miles apart as it is to draw them two, three inches apart. So um, understanding how to relate scale to your eye uh, is uh, like a chief architectural problem, uh, especially when we think uh, through how we digitally design. So let's uh, sort of make sure that we're defining our, our uh, 3D world here uh, with the right ruled units. So for that, why don't we type in, uh, go here to file the properties. Now this is some document properties which um, allow us to add aliases, keyboard shortcuts, um, and a lot of general um, sort of program-wide uh, information. So let's, why don't we go here to units. Uh, and under model units, uh, because we're in the U.S., we're going to use an imperial system, and we're going to do inches. Uh, you can change the tolerance, uh, and you can change how distance is displayed. Um, in this case, we're going to say decimal, and we're going to go to two decimal places. Next, we're going to go here to grid, and we're going to adjust uh, how we want to relate scale. So in this case, we want to do 10, um, and we want to separate each at one inch. Um, and uh, we also want to snap. So when we draw, we can use this construction grid as a um, oh, 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 something to snap to, um, or at least give a ruled surface uh, to draw on. Uh, so that's sort of nice to have. 
so we'll keep those fine. Uh, the next is uh, what's our color space? Uh, it's I always think it's really important to sort of choose a uh, a color which you feel which is comfortable for your eyes. Uh, some people like to go on the darker end of the spectrum. Um, we can go sort of here with a nice blue. Um, uh, blue. Why don't we go down here? Okay. That sounds pretty good to me. Uh, so we'll do this. Um, one more time. Uh, let's go over here. And let's do a wider end of the spectrum. Okay, that looks good. All right. So uh, as we move around, um, I can right click uh, in one of these orthographic ways to pan. Uh, I can use my mouse button or trackpad to scale. And I can also um, use a function called zoom. Uh, and here I could say I can zoom to extents, which means uh, describe everything that I've modeled, or I can uh, zoom uh, in or out, or to a selected, uh, or to a target. Uh, so why don't we zoom out to see our construction plane, see the world. Um, okay, great. So the next thing is looking at uh, some of our, 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 tool, our, our toolbars here. Now, this is where we collect, or our Rhino collects, uh, a series of icons, uh, which are sort of symbolic representations of different functions that you can call. In each of these there are, uh, whether there, it's a curve um, or uh, an operation as a way of uh, manipulating geometry, um, there is um, these symbolic calls which are uh, sort of automatically inputting uh, text information into the command line. Let's expand the command line a little bit, take a little deeper look at it. Um, so, as we expressed before, there is a um, sort of a few ways to interact with, the, with, with Rhino, which is clicking around, which is uh, clicking on different icons, which is finding drop down menus here, uh, or it is also manually typing in uh, certain commands. So the command line is really nice because it acts like a search function. If I am searching for a way to describe a point, I type in the word point. Uh, all of these types of commands which have point or relate to point sort of comes up. And this is really useful for allowing me to quickly find information without having to scroll or search through a bunch of these uh, lists of sorted functions. So uh, search, don't sort. The other, the other really in interesting thing about the command line is it is actually interactive. So say I want to make a rectangle, I type in a rectangle. Um, I can interact with the different ways of making a rectangle here. So for example, if I want to draw it with three points, uh, there you go. Um, or if I want to do it perpendicular to my uh, construction plane, there you go. So that becomes really uh, important um, as a way of interacting with functions and text uh, outside of using uh, some, of the, some of these more symbolic, well, I guess they're both symbolic. Uh, anyway, um, the, the next thing that we should cover is the command history. So this is important because it gives a list of all of the actions that you've done um, in the Rhino interface. So this is nice if you need to sort of go back to a certain point uh, to back up or back out a series of changes. And um, this is called uh, record history down here is to uh, record and then actively shape your history. Uh, we can get into more of this in future lectures. For the time being, uh, it's important to note that uh, your, your command line here is also a print screen. So if you are looking for dimensional information such as like uh, how far are these two points? I can type in this word distance and it says, uh, oh, let's go down here, and it says, uh, okay, I am 11 and 
11.43 inches away from each other. Okay, so that's really nice. Um, okay, so let's try to zoom this up. And as I've been clicking around, you've probably seen that I've been interacting with the bottom of my toolbar in a variety of ways. So let's sort of go into how that happens. Um, okay, so first of all, if you don't see these, these are called O snaps, and you can bring these up by pressing this button, O snap. So um, when you bring this up, this is a way of interacting with Rhino objects. So, for example, if I want to move this point and none of these are things are pressed, uh, I can't actually engage this. I can only come sort of manually close. If I want to hit it exactly, I click this button here, point. Um, and then I do the same function again. I'm typing in move. And then it automatically snaps to that object. Now, what if we have uh, a more complicated geometry than a point? such as a uh, box. So here, let me represent this box with a shaded view. Um, and then make sure that these views are sort of aligned. Ah. So say I want to move uh, my box into this quadrant um, of the construction plane. Well, what I can do is I can press again move. Um, but here, I want to connect to uh, an end. So how I do that is use this snap here, which allows me uh, to select an end. So if it, we're looking in our perspective view, um, it allows me to snap to either of those ends. So um, it's also important to know that uh, if I am in an orthographic view, um, choosing a point uh, which is uh, has depth can become challenging. So this is where the idea of uh, project becomes very useful. So here what it's doing is it's constraining all of my mouse clicks and interactions uh, to this plane, this construction plane. So to see that in action, um, now I'm trying to click that end, and you can see that the cursor is, in fact, uh, even if I try to click somewhere else, it is projected onto this plane. So from here, I can simply move it there. So that becomes a very essential modeling tool as you move forward. There are a few others uh, here which are nice. Uh, uh, near, what it does is it, um, it allows me to snap to any line. Uh, so let me just turn this off for a second. So um, you can see that it's following this line. Um, Midpoint allows me to move to the exact middle of an object, or a line. Uh, perpendicular, uh, so this is very useful if you're drawing uh, a line or a curve, and you want it to perpendicularly intersect this object. Um, that's one way of doing it, uh, which is very nice. So if I'm doing it here, for example, I'm here in the middle. I hit project. Ah, oops, uh, the middle, right there. So I'll go here, here, uh, there we go. And, and, and notice that it's in plane. Okay, so if I don't have this on, what does that mean? So say there's some drawing, I'm drawing some curves, and I want to draw a curve that sort of goes across some space, right? Um, if this is not on, um, there's a possibility of it breaking plane. So what I mean is, like, if it's not on, um, so this curve, um, let's pull it out a little bit is sort of all over the place uh, in terms of it is three-dimensionally defined. Uh, so if I sort of click you know, around in here, um, the same thing would happen. Now, if I press project and I do the same thing, um, you'll notice that all of those things are flattened onto that plane. Now, I can also take one of these curves and uh, project it down onto a plane. So in order to do this, here I just say uh, project, 
uh, to C point, and I say uh, in this case yes, and there we go. So now uh, this line, this curve has been flattened and projected uh, onto this construction plane. So were I, were I to do that in this view, um, let's this time say no. Okay. Uh, and we can see what's happening here where this line gets projected onto the XZ plane, uh, where before it had uh, dimensions which broke those. Um, okay. So, so far we've covered uh, sort of a few different ways of interacting and how to interact with our model space. Uh, we've looked at how to call um, functions by clicking on uh, different icons. Uh, we've quickly shown that there are a set of tabs which have um, a series of sort of symbolic functions under them, and they're all sorted into different types of tools. Uh, there is also a set of information above, which is uh, so uh, specific to curves, surfaces, solids, uh, specific to views, specific for transformations, um, different type of tools. We go over here to panels. Panels refers to uh, the world, uh, at the world. Excuse me, um, the software interface. So uh, you know your layers over here, your toolbars. In fact, you can even go here into uh, tools toolbar layout, and this allows you to edit how uh, different tools pop up. The other thing uh, that's important to understand is, is when you want to be able to uh, turn uh, your Rhino elements into an image, um, this is under um, render, and when we want to be able to turn uh, Rhino objects into drawings, uh, there are also a series of tools uh, in order to get things in and out. We'll cover that in a different lecture. Uh, for the moment, um, why don't we take another look at um, so the Layers tab. So this is a really important way of organizing information. What's nice is that uh, your layers can become deep, which by that I mean you can have um, sort of parents and, uh, and children. Uh, and so these, you can grab and drop them in there. Um, And so this can become a very good way of organizing information. Uh, so for example, one way of organizing information is to do by uh, type, right? So these are solids. And I want to associate here all of my solids under this. So change my declare. This is going to happen to be um, closed, uh, excuse me, uh, boxes. Um, and then here I can do a different shape like a sphere. Uh, and let's draw a sphere. Uh, so notice that this check mark is clicked on sphere, which means when I draw this geometry, it automatically goes into sphere. Um, there is a way of. Um, so let's sort of pull this guy out. Okay. So this is nice because uh, this is one way of organizing information based on uh, the type of uh, geometry it is. Um, and so notice that I tried to turn off. Uh, the layer, but because I am in one of the layers that's being turned off, it's disallowing me from doing that. So I have to be out of um, the layer. So here, um, this is the parent for all my solids, and I can turn them off, and now I can hide all my solids. Uh, this is the visibility bar here. And you also have this box which allows you to lock, um, lock your layers or your objects so you can no longer interact with them. So, I, you know. It's really, it's really nice if you have um, some plan information or some uh, a set of information that you don't want to be able to touch and you want to be able to go on top of. Um, these locks are very important. Um, the other thing to note is that you can change the color. So I can change the color of my things. Um, let's say that they're orange. And no, I still can't uh, interact with them. I have to unlock them and move them together. There's a different way of using layers, and uh, this has to do with a, a workflow of iteration. So let's, what is it? What I mean by that? So let's say this: I am developing a piece, and I'm working iteratively through how that design uh, emerges. So what I might do is say uh, curves 
Um, let's say this is going to be some um, um, view at curves and lines uh, dot one. Okay, so uh, I'm working. I'm going to be working on a design where clear this stuff out. Uh, I'm going to have sort of a, a bunch of curves. And I want to be able to uh, create a function where I'm drawing things between these. Right? So the first thing is I have some guide curves. Uh, and now maybe there's this idea of um, let's go to sublayer and type in guides. Um, pop this down in and do connect connectors. And I have a sort of a pretty crude idea that I have some major curves and then um, some minor curves. And what I mean by this is like this. And they sort of do this. And you can tell that it's um, my hand is a bit crude. It's simply uh, clicking uh, non-uniformly based on how well I can snap things together. And I'm trying hard not to um, make it make it too hard. Okay, so that's my first iteration. I've got um, so I have these three these three um, these three lines are a type of line and then these smaller lines which connect those lines together. Now uh, what I want to do is I want to select my objects and I um, how I do that is I can uh, excuse me, um, click all of the layers and with all the things that I want to select within them I say select objects and let's see I want to move those forward so I'm going to say um, copy objects to layer and this is going to be uh, Titled uh, curves and lines dot two, and like before, I have a few. Maybe there's a, a, a third step in here. So this is uh, guides, uh, connectors, and then I have this new rule here, which is uh, units. Uh, so what I'm what I'm suggesting is that there is a way of pulling iterations forward and um, so if I turn off the previous one all of these come in this top layer here and it allows me to say okay actually you know I actually do like these um, I don't like this one I like these two so I'm going to pull this one through change object layer uh, I'm going to in fact I'm going to delete this and I'm going to draw a different curve Something that needs to be described, you know, in a different way. And what what I've noticed is that um, by doing that, I've changed the relationship with these. So I want to go to my connectors. Uh, th those all need to change. So I need to have a smarter way of dealing with connectors. Uh, so anyway, I can, as I'm moving through it, I'm developing. Um, how these connections work. So in this iteration, actually, we might as well just do this. Why don't we go up here and let's open up uh, Graphhopper and let's explore this model space. So Graphhopper uh, is similar in some ways to Rhino and different in, in some other fundamental ways. Uh, firstly, uh, the model space, you can't necessarily draw objects in. Instead, you can draw, draw diagrams. In this model space, you can have objects which are collections uh, and functions which are rules or functions which act on uh, the objects within these containers. Uh, so you can notice that I can sort of zoom around. Uh, there is uh, a bunch of panels up here, uh, which, like Rhino, uh, sort of collects functions by or sorts functions by type. Um, but like the command line, um, I can also search instead of sort. So for example, if I want to pull up a container that has curves in it, I can type this word in. 
I right click that container to activate it or to interact with it. Uh, and here it allows me to change the name. So I'll say guides. And it says, okay, I want to change uh, set. Do I want to set one or multiple? Uh, what this means is um, Grasshopper is a virtual landscape of uh, a modeled landscape. So in a funny way, it's you can think of you can think of it like a real world uh, and a virtual world, um, all contained within one big digital platform. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's go back to what we we're doing. We we're learning how to work with sort of a grasshopper modeling environment. So let's get points out of here. Uh, so we're setting guides, and this time we're going to set one, this one, uh, and we want to create an, a second collection of different types of curves. So here in the parameters, uh, this is a bunch of types of containers. Uh, so if I do geometry and drop this down, I can see that there's a symbol and uh, a description of what that symbol represents. What I'm looking for is uh, curves here. So I can grab it and bring it in, uh, right click it, excuse me, um, right click it, and these are going to be edges. Uh, and I'm going to uh, set this list is going to be two curves this time. Okay. So uh, what you're seeing is um, an association, uh, a virtual association with a physical object, or a, um, these physical objects are modeled objects. Uh, I can move them around, and they still um, are associated. So when they turn red like that, that means that in these, um, so if I clear this, it goes back, right, um, and this disappears, and this is empty. So this time I want to associate it with one. Okay, click that guy, it's there. Now, there's a few ways I can understand what geometry is in there. If, if they're primitive geometry in which um, this is a collection of physical um, objects, um, I click it, it will show up here, and in fact, I can move these objects. Uh, so if I can move it, that means it's also a rhino object. I can also create virtual objects which are not in the physical world. And they're virtual in the sense that they're always we can change them and parametrically define them before we uh, what 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 the you know, people use is the word fake. So here we are, uh, and we are going to create some virtual objects that relate uh, these two um, types of geometry. Uh, so for one, um, we have the anatomy of um, this list is if I hover over it, it tells me what it is. Uh, this is a collection of curves, uh, and there's one locally defined curve. So I'll over this, which is also a collection of curves, happen to be named edges. Um, display is important. So here, if you draw icons, uh, you lose the ability to see their name, uh, but you see a symbolic indication uh, or a visual symbol. Uh, you can also draw uh, fancy wires. This is important to keep on because what it does is it relates um, different types of data structures. So as data structures, structures become more complex, um, you want to be able to know um, if they are or, or are not, how complex they are. Uh, and so you also have these things called wires. So when I pull it out, it's got an arrow, and I'm pulling a, um, an input, or sorry, um, an output, and it, it needs somewhere to go. Uh, so let's go back up here to display, draw full name. Uh, do not draw icons. Uh, so now we need to find a, um, a way of relating these. Uh, so I'm going to firstly do it by uh, points. I want to create a bunch of virtual points. Uh, with your divisions. Um, so I'm going to divide all of these curves. Um, so again, I type in the search term. So I type in divide. And all these functions that relate to division pop up, or the word divide more specifically. Uh, so here I am wanting to do divide curve. I can divert, divide curve by a number, uh, or by a length, or by a distance. In this case, let's do by a number. Um, so when I zoom in here, um, you'll notice that there's this yellow balloon. Uh, it's, it's an inactive node. It, it, this is a, um, a function which is taking no inputs. Um, and one, one last thing. And, um, and reading what's in 
containers and what's in some of these outputs. Uh, panels are really useful. So panels allow you to um, see what's in things and read lists of information. So in this case, we have these two panels. Uh, one is a list of uh, with one curve, and edges is a list with two curves. Um, so what I did is I uh, was trying to copy this, so I control copy, control paste, uh, or simply alt, or excuse me, click alt and then drag. So we're going to divide these um, by the same number. Now by default, uh, it's by 10. So let's bring in uh, a way of changing what that number is. In this case, it's number slider. Uh, or I can just type double click on the keyboard and type in uh, number slider. Or I can double click and just type in a number. So here I am wanting to divide these curves by 500. Um, and I want to create uh, a set of relationships that relate uh, this guide curve to its edges. Uh, so I type in the word line. And again, these different functions relating to line pop up. I'm going to choose um, line from two points. And what it requires is um, a start point and an end point. So I'm going to get my guide curve. And I'm going to plug it into the start. And I'm going to take my edge, curve, edge points and plug it in here. And there we go. So we get to see that we have a bunch of virtual lines that have been created. Now, what this is really important is because as before, when we moved and adjusted some of our primitive geometries, uh, our connections broke. In this case, uh, they remain the same. So as I move this around, um, let's turn on gumball here. So as I move this around, um, all of a sudden this can start to take some, uh, some interesting form as I sort of iterate through it. Uh, and as I'm moving or changing or scaling these objects, uh, their relationship uh, is not destroyed. Uh, so it is a associative uh, set of relationships. So uh, here we are in this model space. Uh, I've made uh, my sort of iteration two here. And now I need to get my virtual lines. Notice I can't select the greens uh, in my Rhino space. I need to bake them into uh, Rhino. So they need to cease to be virtual objects and become physical. So I, uh, what I do is I right click on the output and I do this called bake. And this allows me to send it to a target layer. I want to send all of these lines. Uh, to connections under lines two, and I want to group them. Okay, so let's get out of Grasshopper, and there's my um, there are my lines. Now I can pull up Grasshopper again, and they're still there, uh, and I can save it. As soon as I exit out of Rhino platform, then Grasshopper will also be exited. So make sure that you save before you exit the platform. But otherwise, it's okay to to close out um, and recall using that command line. So those are the basic modeling environments for Rhino and Grasshopper. I hope you enjoyed.